Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode of These Old Guns. So anyway, what we're doing today, it's a little more technical and scientific than I usually like to get into. We're going to solve a problem that I'm having with this musket. It's not an old gun, it's a reproduction of an old gun. It's a flintlock reproduction of the 1816 Springfield by Petter Soli. Beautifully made gun, very reliable. Issue I'm having is... It's shooting six inches low. Someone suggested, well, we all know if you file the front sight down, it will bring the point of impact in. However, we're not allowed to monkey with the front sights on these guns in the competition. Just like we don't use a patch round ball when we shoot these. Certainly, they'll deliver more ac accuracy and consistency with a patch ball. We shoot them like they did in the military, an unpatched round ball lob them out there and hope for the best but at 25 yards i'm getting impact six inches low going back to more center fire uh, theory and shooting that if you change the weight of your bullet you can change your point of impact without adjusting your sights if you change the velocity of your projectile you will also change the point of impact before you can move your sights we can move the sights and i got to really hold really high to get this thing where i want to shoot it well, we're shooting a 685, 69 caliber round ball. We can't change the size of the projectile or the weight. I think they're about 700 grains. Right. So what we're gonna do is, my other smooth bores, I've had good luck using triple F powder between 65 and 70 grains behind this ball. And all three of the other smooth bores shoot pretty much where you put that front sight. Granted, you only have the front sight. It's like shooting a shotgun with the bead in the front. But they're doing really well. They're plus or minus an inch. And at 25 yards, that's adequate. And at 50 yards, that's certainly adequate. But we gotta try to get this dialed in. So we're gonna shoot this 70 grain of triple F charge across the chronograph. And we're gonna get probably three shots, get an average of the velocity of the bullet. And then look at the target, hold at the same spot, see what kind of group we get, and see where it's hitting. Then we're gonna use the same powder charge of 2F powder, which is a slower burning powder. I like 3F because it burns cleaner and easier to load between shots. But we're gonna go back to the standard of 2F powder in the big bore. Theory is if I slow the bullet down, it spends more time in the barrel, the barrel rises earlier, and it's gonna raise the point of impact. In theory, that's how it works. It certainly works that way in modern guns. We're gonna see if it works in this old flintlock. So, we're gonna load this up with my 70 grain charge. I know it shoots low. I'm gonna put three across the chronograph, just because I've never done that. I'd like to know how fast they go. And then we're gonna change powders and work on a powder charge to see if we can dial this gun to hit point of aim at 25 yards just by changing the powder charge. I hope for the best. Stay with us. All right, we're gonna take the shot here. 70 grains of triple F. I'm gonna use what I call my normal smoothbore sight, which is none of the barrel bands visible, sighting over the tang of the barrel, right down the barrel, putting the front sight on the black. I'll do three shots consistently to see what we get for velocity and see where the impact is. Here's on. Here we go. Chronograph says 449 feet per second. I'm not buying that. Should be double that. Could be the gas is affecting it. We're gonna load that up and take another shot. All right, here's the first shot I took. It was aiming here. We dropped about six inches centered low and the chronograph said it was 449 feet per second. That part I'm not sure is accurate. It may be the sun affecting the sky screen or the smoke, but we're gonna try to run the chronograph. That's not as important as far as, we're gonna try to bring this up here by just changing the powder charge and see if we can make that happen. 
All right, we're all loaded up. We're going to take two more shots with the 70 grains of 3F and see if they're pretty consistent in this area. Shot number two. Okay, that one worked out better with a chronograph. I got that a little further back so it wouldn't get the smoke blasting through the sky screen. It's registering 931.7 feet per second, and the ball is about an inch higher than my first shot, and that is me. But it's still low from where I want to hit. So we're going to put one more round down there, and see what kind of group, if I can remain consistent, see what kind of end of velocity, we'll see what's going on with that. Load up another one. Here we go. I think that's just about touching the first shot I put down there. Chronograph didn't like that. That one said 572 feet per second, so I don't think with this smoke it's working very well. Not important. Well, you, we'll take a walk down there and you'll see it's just about touching the very first shot I took. Now I'm going to change up on the powder charge for the next three shots and see if we can dial it in. Okay. Alright, now we're going with the same charge but instead of 3F, 2F, slower burning powder. I'm being so scientific it almost impresses me or scares me. I'm not sure which. But in theory, might bring the ball a little bit higher. Three. Kind of flinched on that one. Yeah, it's chronographs now, it's say 461 feet per second. That's probably not true. All right, see where that one ended up. All right, other than the chronograph doesn't seem to be doing much of anything, it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, we got three of them touching down there, and that was the 70 grains of 3F, two of those. One 70 grain of 2F, put it in the same spot. So it doesn't appear to be having a whole lot of change. I've dropped it, just to try it, to 65 grains of 2F. But that kind of group is excellent for a smooth bore. And if I have to learn Kentucky Windage, I may have to learn Kentucky Windage. Open the suggestions, but there's no rear sight. And you can't change the front side on these. You can't modify them at all. Other muskets in our competition and our harbor, you can. You can't touch a smoothbore. They are where they are. I'll have to learn Kentucky Winded. We're going to try just another one with a lighter charge. We'll see where that would went. All right, so far, I'm learning no real difference between 70 grains of 3F and 70 grains of 2F and 65 grains of 2F. Uh, I may have to learn to shoot with Kentucky windage. We can't play with the sights, but just for the hell of it, let's try what 80 grains of powder does. This is all being done at 25 yards, so where we are on the trajectory curve is probably still going on.
But I gotta rock just a little bit too. See where that ended up. Take a walk. All right, conclusions, what we got here. This is probably a flu of me. This group here was with the 2F and 3F powder. That last round was 80 grains of 2F. Puts it even lower down here, so going up doesn't help. And I don't think dropping back to 50 or 55 grains of powder, even as a target low, might be ridiculous out of a gun like that. Just really just pea shooter. So we're gonna stay with what's grouping, very consistent, they were touching, and just learn to hold six inches high and change my point of impact. So that didn't work and chronograph didn't work with all that powder. All right. Now, okay, conclusion of what I learned today. Chronographs are pretty cranky with black powder. Really have to have it further in front of the muzzle, which I wasn't set up for that. It's probably about four feet in front of the muzzle. It should probably be eight to ten away from the smoke, and it probably would work more reliably. But it wasn't about the velocity. We know what it does. They're subsonic. But this is a 25 yard group. I got a flyer and this pretty good. And that tells me that powder charge is really irrelevant at this distance of 25 yards as far as the actual uh, point of impact. That's just the way the gun shoots. It's got some very good grouping with a smooth bore, but not gonna be my go-to gun. And I can pretty much guarantee that I was shooting standing, but at the front rested on a bag I don't think I'll be shooting groups like that standing off him with a flintlock. I could try to, but I won't. I'm gonna have to learn to hold up here to hit in here and it's the way it is. Definitely not my go-to gun for home defense, but they're a lot of fun. All right, we'll see uh, if any comments you have, any suggestions on how to change this without bending the barrel or changing the front sight. Willing to hear it. Oh yes, barrels, I have unbent. Straightened out a 42 barrel that was shooting off, but it was an original that was swelled and I straightened it out and it things shot great but I'm not gonna bend the gun with a straight barrel. And uh, we'll see what we're gonna do next time. That's the wrap I got dirty hands. Time to clean up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.